I'd like to take this time to acknowledge the presence of the public gallery, the grade 7, 9, and grade 11 student of Malolo International School in the National Capital District, and the teachers of Manus Adventist School in Manus District, Manus Province, and Council of Women from Malai, Malati Ward Number 2 in the Kairiku District, Central Province. On behalf of the Parliament, I extend our visitors a warm welcome to Parliament. Honourable Member. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Lo Luxa, lo people belong. You, lo Wawarea. Uh, I think this la this la occasion and good la through all Sumatin two camps tap long. Gallery na this la question by me asking related to education na feature long also. So be acknowledging too na talk thank you to student what the feature long come stop long gallery na bad looking. Arem question blow me without notice goes direct to the minister for education. Uh, minister, uh, also I would like to comment to you that uh, you come out in the media and you mentioned that you announced to people of Papua New Guinea that uh, there will be no grade 8 in 2026 and there will be no grade, uh, grade, grade 8 exams in 2026 and there will be no grade 10 exams in 2027. That means all, the, all our children attending grade 8 in 2026 will continue direct to grade 9 and from there on, onwards to grade 10, there won't be no examination. So that means all the, all the grade 8s will go on to grade 9 and all the grade 10s will go on to grade 11. Uh, this is uh, this a very good policy and I would like to acknowledge uh, the Prime Minister also uh, during his maiden speech when he took the office this, uh, this term. One of his policies is to leave no child behind. And, and that's, the, that's the policy that support support that uh, support to the Prime Minister's wisdom. Uh, my, my question is, are we ready? This is a good policy. I, I support it. But are we ready? Uh, what this policy implies is, means that all the great, all our primary schools will be automatically become grade 9. Have to have uh, the capacity of grade 9 in 2026. Do we have the infrastructure in all the schools? to support that policy? Do we have the necessary teachers? Uh, because there will be great, we need grade nine skill teacher, grade te, uh, 11 skill teachers. Do we have those teachers resource in those schools? Uh, that's uh, we have only one year in 2025 to get, get, that, uh, get our primary schools. All the primary schools you have in the, in, F, in your district, all these primary schools will become high schools in 2026. Do we have that capacity? Do we have the infrastructure? Do we have the resource? That's my question to the minister. Are we captured in this budget, 2025? This is our education system. Because that will be a big issue when 2026 comes on. My second question, minister, if we are not ready, uh, can, can you allow for a pace by pace implementation. Like whoever, which district or which province is ready to implement that policy, they can go ahead and implement that policy. While others, we can walk towards implementing that policy. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. That's my two questions. The Honorable Minister for Education. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. I wish to thank the member for uh, World Warrior for his important questions on an important topic. The minimum uh, great education qualification in this country would be a grade 12 certificate. And in line with the Prime Minister's um, and the government's uh, policy of leaving no child behind, we are opting to, uh, we've already done all with the grade 6 uh, school dropouts. Now, examinations will proceed for monitoring and uh, um, for monitoring and uh, uh, other things, but uh, like the grade six uh, uh, dropouts, we won't uh, allow grade six uh, dropouts. In 2026, we won't allow grade eight dropouts. In 2027, we won't allow grade 10 dropouts. Now, um, I've visited several um, um, education institutions and uh, schools in the country, around the country, where our grade eight students, grade six students, and our grade 10 students are still very young. 
to be uh, to come out as um, dropouts in our school system when they are not actually being um, skilled yet. So there is a thinking behind trying to keep all our students in their schools until they are ready to go out and face the world. So basically, this is this is the thinking of my or for this government. Mr. Speaker, infrastructure development in the schools would be a big challenge to us. But I wish to thank Kenny here for a submission I've made for our billion for infrastructure development in 2026, and they've approved it. And it's just approved it. So we are at least trying to move forward in education, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, education is very important. Every other thing falls upon education. When you have a very good education system, when you have educated population, um, a lot of the issues that we are facing, development issues that we are facing, social issues that we are facing, would be addressed through education. So, um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, this should be my short answers to um, the um, member for uh, War Warrior on his important questions. But I think I've uh, adequately answered um, uh, the, the questions he's raised. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. We have a supplementary question. Honourable uh, Member for Kainantu. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. My supplementary question to the Minister for Education. <coughs> uh, myself and many other senior leaders here came out from a different system whereby there is filtration from uh, previously from uh, grade one to grade six, and then from grade six to grade eight, and then from grade eight to grade ten, from grade ten to grade twelve, and then from grade twelve to universities and colleges. <coughs> And uh, during the time, the, uh, the uh, students that were graduating from universities and colleges, uh, there was some, uh, some standard. And the standard of students that were getting educated, of which many of us are products of those, uh, that, that system are here. And many out there who are living in our public service uh, came out through that system. And there was some quality in there. Recently, we have been having complaints about the quality of students that we are graduating from institutions in this nation, university and colleges. Mr. Minister, if you go and speak English with the students at university now, they will respond to you in Pigeon. And the quality of education is so poor. In the light of that, this government in the wisdom decided to, to push everybody, all the students, regardless whether they are competent, whether they, they are bright, whether they are dumb, whether they are dull, all the way to grade 12. So what kind of result are you trying to produce here? But there are students, some who tend to work hard, others who take time to mature and develop in, in their minds. And so, uh, my question is, have, has this policy taken into account the quality of students we will be producing at the end of the day? That's the first question. And the second question is, are there any other, other, other options or possible ways the government can come up with to, to drive or to put those students who, who, who are still taking time to, to or who are under average students, put them through other, other, other processes by which they can, they can be educated and become uh, productive in future to this nation. Then driving everybody through the same channel where in the end you will have best students, better students, and other average students, a mixture of all those that will very likely affect the quality of education that, and, and, and the, the output of the students that we, the, our universities and colleges are putting, putting out now. Uh, my constant concern, Mr. Speaker, is about the quality of students that we are producing now, which is uh, receiving a lot of uh, criticism. Uh, I don't think this policy is going to uh, assist, uh, solve the problem. So those are my two supplementary questions. Thank you. The Honorable Minister for Education. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I wish to thank the uh, member for Ghana to, for his supplementary um, to uh, give you a back, uh, background information, uh, information uh, each year we have 120,000 students going to start their education life. First time to set foot in the, uh, the classrooms. Now, of these, 
at very poor level, we have only 30,000 students graduating from the grade, uh, grade 12 uh, level. Of this grade 12, 30,000 grade 12 students, we have only around 15,000 students moving on to test three um, institutions. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we have a big uh, issue with school dropouts. So what we are trying to do is to minimize all the, um, the st uh, education qualification in the country by way of pushing all our students up to grade 12 uh, qualification. Now, it's, uh, it's not a one-way thing that uh, we are looking at, Mr. Speaker, uh, Deputy Speaker. We also have uh, several pathways, like food, like technical um, uh, education that are available for those who cannot, uh, who are unable to pro progress through, might take all those options. Food is also very, um, uh, very popular now. Uh, uh, the, the enrollment is has gone from 75% uh, to 80%, uh, sorry, 80,000, 75,000 enrollment to 80,000. And then um, this year, probably next year would be 100,000 students. For this, an opportunity for students to complete their, um, uh, obtain a great tour certificate. Uh, Mr. David Speaker, uh, our past education system was geared towards getting our youths or our students for education, uh, sorry, education, uh, university qualification. And the population was low. So we never, uh, we didn't experience some of those things, issues that we are facing in the past, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Our population has grown. But, um, there is a fine line between um, quality of education and getting everybody educated. Uh, I think um, this government is responsible to leave no child behind, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, we're trying to educate everybody. But some people learn quickly, some people learn slowly. But when we allow the examination system to uh, force some people out, the system to force some, uh, some of our students out, then we're condemning them as failures, which uh, that should not happen. So as a responsible government, we're bringing everyone aboard to the ed education system. So that everybody is given equal opportunity. We may uh, face some um, quality issues, but uh, let me um, also remind the House that we have a, a program called STEM, STEM program, science, technology, education, mathematics. And our students are doing very well in U.S. universities. And we've sent some people over to um, uh, India, and we've sent some students over to China. And uh, in, um, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, several of our students are training in Fiji to become pilots. So yes, they're fast learners in our education system and they're slow learners in our education system. But our system as a responsible government should not um, allow our students uh, to be labeled as um, dropouts in our country. They should all be given the equal opportunities to pass through Obtain minimum education quality. Honorable Minister, we have a point of order. Position leader. Minister, announcement play a good announcement. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the problem is, government, you are very good in announcing, announcing programs, but there is no policy to back your announcements. Sometimes slow down. Honorable opposition leader, uh, Mr. Speaker, if you'd like to debate order, blow me. this, I will not yeah. allow it. And point the order, blow me. You, you Why announcement when there's no policy You, you can't use no the point framework. of order to debate the statement uh, question. So, Honorable Minister, continue your response. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker. Yes. The, um, what we want to achieve is to provide education to all our children, not to force some out and uh, allow a few to, uh, to pass through. Uh, with, the, um, with the increase in uh, our population, this is a real need. So I wish to thank the government, the Marabaros government, for having the foresight in uh, us allowing uh, all our students to pass through, the, uh, to obtain the minimum 
um, uh, education qualification standard in this country. Yes, I agree with um, uh, the member for Ghana too. Uh, there'll be issues with quality. There'll be issues with quality. But I think uh, we must give the benefit of that to our children to prove themselves because there are a lot of opportunities made available um, for fast learners and uh, slow learners. Our students are very young at grade 6, grade 8, and grade 10. And they're not <coughs> mature enough to face the world. They don't have any skill yet. So when we hold them together in institutions like this, you mold them up, you build them up, you upskill them before they go out into the, um, uh, in the society. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. We have another supplementary. That will be the last supplementary to this question. The Honourable uh, Member for Amudi, right again. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, my supplementary to the uh, Minister's uh, statement is, uh, it's good. The policy is good. Do we make sure that uh, there's no uh, st students or children leave behind? But when we look at the students as a whole, we look at the big, big group of people. All of them are not fit to choose certain things. Uh, they are fit to choose certain things. I'll give one example. In Indonesia, Indonesia is the third or fourth biggest uh, population in the world. And there's no dropout system in Indonesia. Can we not put it, look at some alternatives to look into that line to make sure that when the students come into grade 8 or grade 9 or grade 10, can we look at their skills and qualifications and fitness? Yeah. Those who have uh, academic backgrounds, they are leading, they put them in a separate group. Yes. Those who are lead, uh, yeah. they are essentially the skills. I didn't the skills and put them in the skills yeah. so that they can grow up and they can get the uh, papers and they are qualified to do what they wanted to do. Instead of putting together and pushing them up and yeah. someone are qualified. Very That's the problem we will face in the country in years to come. Very thank you, uh, TV speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable uh, member, I could not get a question from your supplementary. It's like your commentary. My question to the minister is, can you not identify? Can you not identify other, other ways of letting the students go into and fest that, uh, festing them into the system that they can be qualified and, and the employment skills that they will acquire. Honorable Minister for Education. Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I wish to thank the uh, member for Ambunti for his uh, supplementary. Yes, the student says yes. Uh, we will have um, schools, schools um, that is um, uh, the um, relevant and uh, pathways for our uh, school system before they obtain I mean uh, for them to go, go through and obtain the minimum uh, education level uh, standard which is great work uh, each school and its province would be or its electorate would be given the opportunity to choose what is relevant in their area or in their province to uh, a skill that will, they will choose a skill and then they, they go through that so that in, at the end of uh, grade 12 they would be uh, given the um, certificate of competency in that, area, in that skill that they've uh, selected. I'll give you one example. Um, uh, I had an opportunity to visit uh, Morobe, two schools in Morobe, um, the Bumayong and the Busu Secondary Schools. One of them is uh, good um, land, big land, enough for agriculture. So they've chosen to go to agriculture to get the students to do agriculture. One of them is a city school. Uh, they, did, they did not have the land. I mean, they do not have the land to uh, go into agriculture. So they went into um, uh, tourism and hospitality. Now, these are the sort of uh, opportunities, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that would be available or that are available in our schools. Uh, so relevant pathways uh, would be, um, is available now. Uh, and it's only for us to promote and see where our students who cannot go up um, to further education through um, the tertiary institutions, they at least when they leave grade 12, they must have a skill to fall back on. And uh, while I have this opportunity also, education must not be seen as a way to uh, um, getting jobs. Education must be seen as a way to um, obtain, uh, um, you know, knowing how to read, knowing how to write, knowing how to speak. And then, you know, God bless us, really, um, uh, 
uh, abundantly with all the resources in this country, Mr. Speaker. We should refocus and realign our mindsets and the mindsets of our students to go back to the land if possible. Thank you.